you so much for giving me an opportunity to come and talk to you. Yeah, I'm not listed in your program, so this is the ultimate in economic sustainability. Four speakers for the price of three. <laughs> so see, we're already on that road to recovery. Um, just kind of to get a sense of uh, who we are talking to today, um, how many people are from the central Illinois area and are familiar with Home Street Home Ministries? Okay, a couple. How many people are not from the central Illinois area at all? Okay. And some in between. Excellent. Well, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit um, about what I think will be a little bit of a unique uh, take on the idea of economic impact and recycling. You know, I used to be in technology sales for about 20 years, and we would always talk about uh, speeds and feeds. I could tell you something, I could tell you how long it would take to boot up, I could tell you how long it would take to print the page, how many pages it would um, print out, how fast. Um, and I could certainly spend time sharing with you what Home Street Home Ministries does in its recycling program. Um, annually, we recycle about a million and a half pounds of materials from one warehouse location on the west side of Bloomington. Home Street Home Ministries actually started on Thanksgiving Day in 1917, so we're about 100 years old. The purpose of Home Street Home Ministries was, <clears throat> excuse me, to provide hope for people. And we continue to do that. We're a homeless shelter our children and family services, and through our retail operations. And so retail operation consists of two thrift stores, one in Bloomington and one in Lincoln. And so the things that get donated to uh, Home Sweet Home Ministries go into one of two tracks, either resale or recycle. And what we try to do through the thrift store as a not-for-profit is to provide quality at a low price. And not everything meets that particular standard. But we like to say there's no junk in our world. And that goes for both the materials that we get through recycling, of which 40% of donated materials go into recycling at home student ministries. But it also goes uh, with respect to the lives of the people that we touch through what we do. Everything has value. And so while the typical three R's, three reuse and recycle, I would like to offer a fourth part to you today, and that's about relationship. And so as a not-for-profit organization in the Central Illinois area, in our community, we would not be able to do what we do with respect to resale and recycling without partnership. And I think it's important if you are in a community where a not-for-profit is looking at the possibilities of offering recycling and resale, as a means of gaining revenue for their organization, that we, as citizens of the community, come alongside those kinds of efforts. You know, economic impact has a lot of different colors to it. The economic impact that Home Street Home has on our community can be felt through what we do in the lives of people. So a person living in a home <coughs> shelter can move out as quickly as possible and have an opportunity to live their own sustainable life with a job, with their own place to live, having be part of the community just like everybody else, that truly does make an economic impact. And so every piece of clothing, every piece of plastic, every like, piece of electronic, every household good, every children's shoe, every book that gets donated to Home Sweet Home Ministries has an integral part in what we do in the relationship building in people's lives. And so I would postulate that there's an opportunity for partnership in your community that you look into it because it can make a huge impact. Now what I'm going to tell you now as a not-for-profit is very important. You're probably not going to hear it from a lot of people. It's not about money for us. Home Sweet Home Ministry understands that if I come to you as a not-for-profit organization and the only thing I ask is for your money, that is not, that's a one-way street. And what Home Sweet Home has done over its 95 plus years of existence and its 8 plus years of retail and recycle operations is to understand one thing. It has to be about what we can give back as well. We teach that to the folks that we touch every day. 
that because they have value, they can provide service to their community. And as a foundational principle, Home Street Home believes in the very same thing. So as a partner with places like the Ecology Action Center, like Illinois State University's Office of Sustainability, working with Illinois Wesleyan University on their move out recycling programs, those kinds of things remove things from the landfill. And could I tell you how much that is? No. Do I know that it makes an impact in the life of one young college student who might at one point in time understand, maybe I shouldn't just dump it in the dumpster. Maybe I should actually recycle it. And maybe that's going to make a difference. You know, we talk a lot about this millennial age, the millennial group of young people that we that are confronted with now. And I, I spent time yesterday in a meeting talking about how self-focused they are. And so Home Sweet Home believes that through our recycling program, through our recycling education program at the universities, at the local schools, it's important for those young people to be the next generation of folks that make sure that our environment is healthy. And by doing what we do on a daily basis, we can do that. We have a lot of local touch that we do. Our retail operations provides about a million and a half dollars of revenue in the Home Sweet Home Ministries for programs and services. And that includes both resale and recycle. We all know the tentative nature of government funding. And if we as an organization, as a non-for-profit, were to rely on that solely, or as even as a main focus of what we do, how we pay for programs and services, I think all of us know that's going to be kind of troublesome. And we would be very limited in what we would be able to do. And so our, our foundation is to rely less on the government and more on the community at large. Billy Shelper, who is the founder of Home Sweet Home, understood one thing. If the community comes together to deal with issues that impact everybody, things can change. Now, whether it be helping the homeless, whether it be helping single moms, or whether it be helping the environment. It's all of us together in partnership, in relationship, that will truly make that difference. And so again, if there are organizations in your community that want to do these kinds of things, but yet aren't quite sure how to pull it off, it's going to be in partnership together that those things are going to be able to happen. You know, we started off in a recycling center that's the size of most basements. We moved to a warehouse of 9,000 square feet. That's really big. Um, where we could barely fit the forklift in, the dock door, with about that much room to spare at the end of every evening. And we were always just hoping and praying we could get that dock door closed. Um, right now we're in a warehouse. We've been in there for about two years. 22,000 square feet, but 18,000 usable square feet for recycling efforts. For those of you who are, who are from the central Illinois area, you know Steak and Shake. Um, and so we had the opportunity to purchase the old Steak and Shake corporate offices over on the west side of Bloomington. And that's where our recycling and warehouse efforts all of that begin there. Um, it's interesting because the, the, the black and white square tiles are still there. There's some Steak and Shake logo stuff still on uh, the walls. Uh, there's still a room called the Chili Room, where chili was made. If you've ever you've been to Steak and Shake and you've had chili at Steak and Shake, it probably was made in that room. doesn't smell like chili anymore, but... Uh, so these are the kinds of things that we have been in process. Um, it's a challenge to do it on the local level because you, in some respects, you have to forego or don't have the opportunity to connect with large national organizations. Much of what we do parallels things that Lincoln Land people does. And you know, great folks, we have the same kind of common mission, really. Uh, one of the, but you know, their partnership with Bell is an amazing opportunity for them. Imagine not having that, but yet still trying to focus in on what we can do as far as computer or electronics recycling. So, so we have to really think out of the box. We have to think of new ways to partner and build a relationship. You know, we 
for whatever efforts uh, we have been able to do over the, this last year, um, it always comes back to a particular focus, and that focus is always about how can we do it better for the community. It's not about how much more money I can build. It's not about how much more resource I can build. And I know that seems kind of counterintuitive for a not-for-profit organization that needs money to run. But it really is about being a citizen of the community first and a not-for-profit organization second. Because at the end of the day, if we don't all work together on this, none of this is going to actually happen. Um, so I will just, again, share that from our experience, it is about relationship. It is about partnership. It is about the ability to think in ways that sometimes aren't classic recycling efforts. Um, we have found the most experience with that. And so, um, again, we're just, we're, we're honored to be the um, outstanding not for profit organization of 2013 from the Illinois Rights Cycling Association. That was completely unexpected. We just do our little thing. Um, it's very, oh, we're very old school about it. That's why this presentation is very old school. I could have you know, had the clickers going, and then of course you know. Um, but I'm trying to, you know. So, uh, but thank you very much. I appreciate it.